So, our first FIA award winner presentation is the Polynesian Cultural Center. Since it opened in 1963, the Polynesian Cultural Center on the Hawaiian island of Oahu has hosted millions of guests, including countless dig dignitaries from around the world. Its recent comprehensive planning and development effort has brought this iconic facility to the 21st century, complete with state-of-the-art immersive guest experience. Please welcome President and CEO P. Alfred Grace, and producer Pat Scanlon and President Michael Lee. Take it away, Jim. Um, there you go. Aloha. Aloha. Well, we're delighted to be with you today, and uh, I suppose I ought to explain away the accent a little. So, my name is actually Portata Alfred Grace, but you can call me Al. I come from New Zealand, or Aotearoa, which is its uh, native name, and I share that with you because New Zealand is part of the Polynesian Triangle, and so uh, I do represent the location. For those of you not familiar with the Cultural Centre, and, and by the way, I'm delighted to be here with uh, Mike Lee and Pat Scanlon, and I uh, would like to share a little bit about what the PCC is, the Polynesian Cultural Centre. It is a, is a cultural theme attraction. It's located in the small town of Laie, on the north shore of Oahu in Hawaii, uh, adjacent to the Brigham Young University Hawaii campus where most of our employees come as students coming from the different Pacific Rim countries. And uh, we've been around since 1963 and as uh, was noted and in fact we celebrated our 50th anniversary last year. We had quite the party, some people still have yet to go home. Uh, but it, it, was, it was a wonderful experience. Back in 2008, uh, as we uh, look at our, our trends, our run rates, our mission, our vision, where we wanted to go in the future, uh, it became very evident to us that we needed to do a lot of self-evaluation as to what the PCC was going to become in the future. And so that's where these two guys came in. We're happy to have Mike and Pat join us and help us in our long-term plan. In fact, we looked out 20 years. We identified many activities and attractions. And uh, Mike and Pat played a very integral role in coming up with those ideas. But uh, as much as we trust them, which is more than we trusted ourselves, we still felt that it was necessary to have other resources available. So we worked with Joni Newkirk um, out of Florida. Her company is Integrated Insights and we had them do a lot of research on various attractions and opportunities for the Polynesian Cultural Center. And keep in mind, you've got a, a cultural attraction, a cultural, a, 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 an authentic cultural experience, and an entertainment center coexisting in one experience. And uh, so that makes it very challenging to come up with appropriate activities and attractions that will help you fulfill your mission and benefit your overall goals of uh, sustaining your, your product, your business, and in our case, providing students with employment opportunities so that they can pay their way through schooling. And so uh, that was a challenge put before us. As we went through the research, uh, there were a couple of uh, the activities, attractions that really stuck out. You know, uh, We determined that to, after a while they became what we call no-brainers and uh, we wanted to move forward on those. In addition to those two activities, which we're going to share with you, the, uh, one is called Hawaiian Journey, and the other one is being built now. Uh, we'll see that in a sec. We had a restaurant that was under renovation. We'd gone through with the plans and we're, we're redoing this massive building. It sits 1,100 people for dining uh, in one seating, and uh, we were basically made aware that it had no wow factor whatsoever. In fact, the, the question was asked of me, where's the wow? And so we turned to Mike and Pat and said, Pat, Mike, where's the wow? There's no wow in this building. Help us get some wow into this building. And so that was another assignment that they took. So they came in on that project well, well into the uh, had we started building it? No, we hadn't. But well, we were well into the design phase. So anyway, we'd like to share a video with you that will help you 
appreciate a little bit more about what we're doing, and then after that, we'll be happy to answer questions. In 1947, the people of the small community of Laia decided to recreate a hukilau for the enjoyment of tourists and islanders. Over 2,000 people enjoyed the program presented on the beach. In time, that hukilau concept transformed into what has become the Polynesian Cultural Center, which opened on the north shore of Oahu in 1963. The PCC was founded to present and perpetuate Polynesian cultures, provide part-time employment for the Polynesian students attending the adjoining Church College of Hawaii, now BYU Hawaii University, to help cover schooling expenses and cause Laia to thrive. This year, the PCC will celebrate its 50th anniversary. Since opening, thousands of graduates have gone into the world and millions of visitors to the Polynesian Cultural Center have been touched by the spirit of students who have worked there. Through the years, some of those 38 million visitors have included royalty, entertainers, and prominent international leaders. And the PCC is now widely regarded as one of the world's most admired and successful culturally themed attractions. The 42-acre center showcases the traditions, history, and hospitality of seven Pacific Island cultures. Fiji! Samoa! Samoa! Tahiti! Aotearoa! Hawaii! In the villages representing those seven island cultures, ancient customs continue. Visitors interact with natives as they make cloth by pounding bark, fire from rubbing sticks, jewelry out of leaves, stories with their hands, meals in underground ovens, messages with drums, and much more. Guests also participate with Polynesians in native customs, games, and activities such as canoe paddling, coconut tree climbing, Hawaiian bowling, spear throwing, ukulele lessons, and more. In short, they learn by doing, for the center's goal is to help every guest experience, not merely watch, native life. As a living cultural center, the PCC continues to evolve and renew its presentations and experiences. Beginning with Polynesian panorama in the 60s, the center's evening show spectacular has provided a memorable finale to the day's adventure. And now, the newest evening show, Ha! Breath of Life, features stunning special effects, surround sound, and over 100 performers, most of whom are students. To date, over 18,000 BYU Hawaii students from approximately 70 nations have helped finance their college education while working at the not-for-profit center. In 2011, our 37,000 square foot gateway buffet restaurant was completely renovated. Once simply a place where guests could enjoy a buffet dining experience, Gateway was remade into a storied grand Hawaiian hall complete with large core wood columns and a 500 foot long mural encircling the entire space depicting a Hawaiian king welcoming his royal Polynesian brothers and sisters and other visitors to join in feast and fellowship. In March of this year, we opened Hawaiian Journey, a whole new guest experience. Our aging IMAX theater was transformed into a lush tropical volcano where guests enter the theater through an ancient lava tube. Once inside, a whole new adventure unfolds featuring rarely seen spectacular giant screen images of the Hawaiian Islands presented in high definition digital projection and accompanied by a soulful Hawaiian story narrated by a wise native kapuna, authentic music and sound, and special in-theater effects that add moments of surprise, 
fun and excitement. And there's still more to come. Opening late next year, the Polynesian Cultural Center will add yet another major new attraction, the Hukilau Marketplace, a three-acre retail, dining, and entertainment destination featuring genuine Polynesian artisans, local fresh foods, other special offerings, and fun. Who would have guessed that what began as a simple hukilau on the beach would have had such a profound effect on so many lives? Today, the joyous spirit of that hukilau lives on at the Polynesian Cultural Center, where Polynesians still join with visitors to create an unforgettable experience. Thank you. Thank you, Omahalo, as we would say in Hawaiian. Um, it really is a delight and honor for us to be here, but especially to win such a pre prestigious award. Um, as we went through the development and the planning and the process, we wondered would it be successful? And we were delighted with the response we got from our customers, but then also to be recognized by the best in the industry, which, uh, which you, you are and represent is, is truly a, an honor that uh, we'll cherish at the Polynesian Cultural Center. So with that in mind, uh, if you have any questions for us, we would be delighted to address them. I know Mike and Pat will be delighted to address them, and myself. Yes, ma'am. Aloha. I Aloha. Um, the second... Oh. Now, in addition to the buffet restaurant, you also have the Ali'i Luau, and then there's another Luau that I'd heard something about in Samoa. Is that, that the whole Luau show with dinner, or is that just a, another meal thing? Or, or it, I know that was new for this past year. Yeah, thank you. It, it's called the Island, Island Luau, and it's basically a Samoan uh, form of the traditional Hawaiian Luau, and it provides our guests with another dining alternative. One thing about the cultural center is uh, we, uh, Hawaii is a mature destination. 65% of the visitors to Hawaii have been there approximately six to seven times. If you're from the West Coast, you've been there 10 to 11 times. And so we're, one of our challenges has been to get people to return to the Polynesian Cultural Center. And uh, one, one point that's been challenging, the cultural center has been Hawaii's number one paid attraction since 1977 um, and we had to be careful and to quote from a gentleman Jim Collins you have to be careful that you we don't fall into the trap of uh, being uh, comfortable with being good he states good is the enemy of great and so we we really wanted to be great and we saw our attendance numbers reducing um, Hawaii is a beautiful destination, so one of the reasons we have these new attractions, including the island luau, is to attract the repeat visitors. Okay. Any other questions out there? Yes, ma'am. Because it is part of the cultural center, the you have Sora. to make sure that you... Really wait, oh. Because it's part of the cultural center, is it even more important for you not to take creative license with the entertainment? Absolutely. Um, it, it's, uh, in fact, I, I'd like, it's, I'm very biased. You know, I was raised in the culture and I married a Hawaiian <laughs> and she's very particular as well. But it's an interesting challenge for others to come in and be very sensitive to them because you will at some point run into a roadblock. I don't know if any of you gentlemen want to share something there. <laughs> well, one of the things that was interesting for us is that um, PCC was a very special place. It has a ver very special feeling when you're there. Yet at the same time, the facilities at PCC aren't the story. It's really the interaction that you have with the staff that's there that makes you feel welcome. and. Um, in trying to figure out how to 
curate a culture versus celebrate a culture, I think, is where the rubber meets the road. And to the extent that we could find ways working with Alfred and his, and his team to celebrate um, all of those cultures, it creates then an opportunity for entertainment to be used as a device to assist in that. When you're part museum and you're part attraction, finding the, the, the middle road as to how to incorporate the best of, of learning and discovery with uh, entertainment and satisfaction, um, that's where it's, uh, it takes some time. And lots of people have voices. Uh, lots of the staff would have their feelings about what they wanted to do. And we had to listen to that for a good long time before Mike and I started to absorb enough of uh, understanding so that we knew how far we could take uh, the entertainment quotient, particularly because we're trying to satisfy the requirement to get repeat visitation. The attendance at PCC is approximately, in any given year, about 20% are repeat visitors. And in the attractions world, you know, any successful attraction is up north of 80% in any given year for what their uh, repeat visitors are for that year. So we needed to find ways to uh, add the kinds of experiences at PCC that would be true to the cultural mission of PCC, yet at the same time give visitors who had been to the island many times before reasons to come back and revisit uh, PCC. I, I might add that um, one thing that was very interesting is, is that we adopted a cultural process which is very familiar to all indigenous cultures and that is you identify how a decision-making process is made within their culture and invariably it leads back to the elders or in Hawaiian to the kupuna. And so nothing was approved without the kupuna's review, their counsel, their advice. And generally when we found we went through that process, uh, everything else moved out because no one wants to argue with them. So. Well, when they weigh 400 pounds and are six <laughs> feet seven, you don't argue with them. <laughs> That reminds me of uh, during the time we've been working on it, many of you saw the movie uh, Saving Mr. Banks, and uh, I felt like we were in that position many, many times with these uh, generous, uh, wise, and uh, energetic people who simply wanted someone to take care of their baby, you know, and we would plead, please, we'll do a good job if you just let us play with your baby. You know, it's not just the baby, it's everything about them. It is deep things, their faith, their families, the foundation of their society. And when you deal with those kind of things, uh, you have a heavy burden, uh, a deep responsibility to do it right. And uh, one other thing that happened along the way, uh, through the, grind, the meat grinder that a lot of you will recognize as uh, the attractions business, um, you wonder, you know, will this work? Will people like it? At the end of the um, uh, time that we were developing the large uh, restaurant project, one of the oldest employees, a man named Longo, uh, who is from Samoa. Samoa. He's um, a chief, actually. A chief. He, we saw him, Pat and I walked in uh, just before it opened, and he was standing in the middle of the room by himself, looking at the grand mural, one of the largest in the world, with tears running down his face. And we walked over to him and <clears throat> said, Longo, what's, what's, what's going on? He said, oh, if the elders could only be here today to see this, they would be pleased. And that's the payoff. We, we're, we were so, uh, I gotta say the word blessed, to come to know these very good people. Thank you. I just had a question. Um, of course, you know, grew up in Hawaii, so I know the PCC from when I was a kid. Um, and it has a, a niche in which it treats with the culture very much focused on traditional culture, on buildings as they were built, costumes as they were worn, crafts as they were executed. And as you go forward with the PCC and you consider this idea of revisitation, do you think there is room uh, 
for contemporary expressions uh, of, of culture, because most of these cultures do have artists who work in continuity. Uh, do you think there's a niche in the PCC for contemporary expressions yeah. of that same culture, or, or is it within its brand that it is very much about this traditional feel? Yeah, excellent question because, you know, culture, sometimes we define it by uh, chronology, a timepiece, and culture is, is always uh, developing and, and morphing and changing into something else. And one of the things we're really excited about the new marketplace is a marketplace allows us to um, provide uh, the, the Polynesian artisans to expand their repertoire and to present uh, their, their modern views of, of life. Um, so what we, we tend to do is we tend to keep the island villages themselves somewhat in, in the past, in the history, and then we, as we broaden out into, for example, like Hawaiian Journey, that's, a, that, that's not just a movie presentation, it's a multi-purpose theater, so that we can have a, sort of, a, 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 sort of like a, a full performances in the round and so forth that are mic'd and, and that express themselves in different manners. The evening show theatre is designed so that we can do modern renditions with audio-visual uh, items as well. One thing that all Polynesians, and, and sometimes people come, we call them howlies, you know, uh, that's people who are fairer than me. Uh, <laughs> anyway, and they say, that's not right and what have you. Well, what where, when you're safe in your cultures and you want to evolve, you like to experiment and you like to incorporate other elements of different environments. And so we do have forums to do that. The marketplace will be a great place to do that. Um, everything we develop, we're trying to develop for, for multi-purpose use. Even this gateway restaurant, in 30 minutes, can, the tables can be cleared and we can have an a evening function there of that nature and it's got the lighting effects and audio to support it. So we're very open to it, but there's always a fine line you walk. No one wants to see you making uh, up something and then using culture as an excuse to have that. It has to still have its roots in the culture and it has to have evolved from the people of that culture. And if, we, if it evolves from those people, then it's okay. If it's just a ride that's got a ticky in front of it, that's not acceptable. Okay. Yeah, we, we spent, um, Mike? We spent a lot of time on that, Joe, thinking about the Polynesian Cultural Center is in fact a cultural center and cultures are living things. And while the, the village area that Alfred is referring to is sort of pre-contact uh, representations of those cultures, once we move outside of that, we kind of consider that that's sort of like the sacred ground of the PCC. But once we move outside of that village area, we wanted there to be more contemporary expressions of the Polynesian cultures as they live today. And, and those are expressed, those, th those representations are expressed through food and through artistic expression, uh, through um, various forms of retail merchandise, hand-wrought things and so forth that are of today. So you never, it, it, the, 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 the challenge is always getting stuck in the past, but a cultural center is about living today as well. So that's what we're trying to do. It's, it's, an, it's, not, an easy, um, it's not an easy road to walk, but that's, that's the effort to do it so that PCC stays relevant. Um, I wanted to ask if, uh, is there a, um, we were talking about the theater. Is the theater a, a ride show? Is it a, because it looked like the seats were moving and it's kind of time to the productions and does that change over time or is it just, can you describe the theater process a little bit? The uh, Hawaiian Journey movie was, was an, it was an IMAX theater. We took out all of the film-based IMAX equipment and with Electrosonics help, we put in new state-of-the-art digital projection, large screen, it's a Christie system, whole new audio system. We have lots of control capability in there. So as Alfred said, we can use it for multi-purposes. We put a stage platform in the theater. We got rid of the pit that typical, typically goes along with an IMAX theater so that you could have performers that come into that theater and put on uh, cultural performances. We can do high school graduations from the local high school. A number of things that can be uh, made to be more versatile there. 
The experience that we did for the main show attraction was uh, an experience of discovering Hawaii the way that the original Hawaiians may have seen it when they were first there. So that uh, there are, there's no indication of urbanization. You see no buildings. There are no roads in any of these images. And we, we took great care to make sure that all of that footage was such so that our, their, our storyteller could tell us something from his heart and his soul as to what, the, what Hawaii means to him and how he relates to him, himself and his culture. Um, the plan was to be that you could produce additional movies um, looking at additional cultures. This one is about Hawaii, but we could do Samoa, we could do Maori, we could do Tahiti. So there is that opportunity to create a, a catalog of representations in that movie, in that theater. Also, uh, with help from Technifex that we had in putting in the, the special seating and the sound effects, I have to say, one of the lessons we learned, by the way, is that sound can move buildings. Because we, we, have, we put in some rotary subwoofers that will take a signal down to two hertz. And you can't hear anything below 20, but you can sure feel it. And uh, when, in, in the movie that we were just showing, the promo piece, we show some uh, scene of flying over volcanic fountain. We were lucky that the Big Island was erupting when our film crew was there, and we, we got over there to get it. But as we're flying over that, we, those, those rotary subwoofers are cued, and now it feels like there's, there's an earthquake going on in the building. So Pat was standing inside uh, doing a run-through, and I was outside the building on the day that we were doing some testing, looking at the wall. And I realized when they triggered the subwoofers, the wall began to move about two and a half inches. Bow this way, and then bow that way. I said, Pat, turn it down, turn it down. I kept turning it up because it <laughs> felt so great on the inside. <laughs> but ultimately, we had to tone it down so that we would keep the bolts together in the building. But um, we, we put these effects in. The, 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 the effect of the seating right now is ethereal. We keep the seats moving ever so gently forward and back and so forth so you feel like you're flying. Well, if we do another movie and let's say it's, it's, uh, it's, it's on Samoa and maybe we're in a, uh, a Land Rover that's traveling over road, then, then we can create those seats to create a bumping sort of a feeling. So we were trying to incorporate a, a series of effects, physical effects in the theater that would give us the ability to accent another movie done for another purpose in a different way. So we've, we've tried to do that, and we'll have to see how that works out as soon as you, as you, uh, you, know, you give the green light to the next movie production. You know, I, I, I just want to reemphasize again, too, one thing about cultural centers and, and attractions like the Polynesian Cultural Center is that there's a lot of downtime in your facilities. And, and so, for example, um, the night show, the large performance at the Polynesian Cultural Center, that's a multi-million dollar facility that is used two hours a day. Uh, and likewise, the IMAX theater in the past was used for four to five hours a day, and that's it. And so when you're landlocked and you don't have opportunity to expand too much and add additional attractions and so forth, or activities, it's important that you try and utilize your facilities to the best of your ability. And so when we went into the restaurant, when we went into this movie theater and so forth, the, the new night show, everything is being designed with the opportunity to use it for other purposes throughout the day and, and get a much better uh, return on investment for, your, for what you put into the structure. That, that's important to us. <laughs> Uh, hi. I'm wondering, how do you keep your auth authenticity? And what made you decide, for example, to theme or decorate the movie theater as, as a volcano instead of, for example, choosing um, a contemporary Hawaiian or Polynesian architecture yep. for it? E excellent point. One of the things is the landscaping around it is if you look at this mountain, if you could see behind it, there's actually a mountain range behind it called the Ko'olau Mountain Range. And uh, everything is very green and vibrant in that area. So quite frankly, the IMAX theater was an eyesore. Uh, it looked like the, the structure in, a, in an aircraft carrier, you know, stuck out there. And so we wanted to cover it. There happens to be another mountain feature on the other side of the lagoon that you don't see. And so now when people enter into the village portion of the center, they're looking at a large 
mountain structure on the right and then an even larger mountain structure on the left hand side of the canoe. Um, there's, there's lighting, a lot of uh, LED lighting on the mountains and there's a water area there that can now be used for evening performances. So again, it's multi-purposing, even the exterior of that mountain is being used for it. Um, the other thing is, is we do have a, a substantial Hawaiian village, uh, which we try and keep as, as authentic as possible. And so that's where we, we accommodate that. Uh, ag again, go going through uh, our programs, we, need, we try and keep it as authentic as possible through evolution, not just through trying to cover something over. Thank you Thank so much. You. I think all of us want to come to see it. Thank you, everybody, for your questions. Thank you, Alfred, Pat, and Michael. Woo.